accents are different all over the UK. Which part of the UK have you found it the most difficult to understand? Scotland. (laughs) 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 It's very difficult. (laughs) Good evening from Jakarta, uh, Pak Rizal. It's great to see you again. And I'm very pleased to see you looking so well. Um, Thank you very much for agreeing to have this quick chat with Chris and myself before you come back to to Indonesia. The reason we're very pleased to to be able to chat with you is that you've been a great friend to to Britcham and the UK over the last four and a half years. Um, And I personally think you've done an awful lot to help uh, develop the relationship with with the UK. Um, And I'm very grateful for that. So the the idea today is just to, to chat with you a little bit about your experience in the UK, some of your thoughts about what's going on. And also, uh, just a few social questions as well. So on that regard, what I would like to do, I, I went all the way back to when you were first appointed as ambassador, and I saw a quotation from you that said you were a rock music fan. And one of the things that you were looking forward to um, by going to the UK was to attend rock concerts. Have you managed to attend any and which ones? Yes, you know, uh, uh, it's a number of concerts that I attended. The first one, uh, I think in 2016, is the Coke play. Okay. Yeah, and then, you know, I saw the Iron Maiden, Metallica, and all, you know, others. Uh, oh, really? Band. Yes. No, and especially because there is another, you know, hard rock lover, you know, in the embassy, which is Bonnie. You know, he's the one, you know, who always, you know, send all the links about our the announcement about the concerts in, in London. Right. So we end up, you know, watching all those, you know, concerts. <laughs> Very good. We and also managed to, to watch Rainbow. You know what? Blackmore. Yes, I, I yeah. was just watching uh, a clip from Rainbow about an hour ago. Oh. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think you and I are, are roughly the same age. So, so I, yes. I certainly <laughs> grew up with, uh, with Rainbow. Rainbow Rising was one of the first albums I Right, heard. yes, so get, yeah. Very good taste. Is there <laughs> a, any band you, you wanted to see, you have not been able to see? Uh, well, you know, we were planning to watch the Phil Collins, but right. he got ill at that time, I think. Okay. And then, you know, he got hospitalized, it was cancelled. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I did watch uh, Pink Floyd when I was a student, uh, back in 1994. Yeah, so, but, you know, they did not, you know, have any concert anymore. Pink Floyd, yeah. yeah, it's too bad, you know, and then, and David Gilmore actually, you know, is not performing, you know, in the UK, you know, for the last four and a half years. Yes. That's also something that I think I really miss. But, you know, another one that, you know, I will, I'm going to miss is actually Deep Purple. It's coming in and, you know, they plan, I think, uh, either the end of this year, but I don't think that, you know, they will go ahead. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, uh, Pat Rizal, something um, I should point out that at our last Christmas party, um, we featured Pink Floyd. The Britcham team did uh, We Don't Need No Education, um, <laughs> right? And, uh, and it's a well-known fact now that our chairman has a certain eccentricity um, <laughs> with, with, with regards to picking up a microphone at Christmas parties. So, Perhaps the next one we're able to have, you, Bonnie, might be able to uh, join Ainsley, the exec office team, and maybe a couple of board members and uh, gig I'm, away. I'm quite happy to do some <laughs> head banging. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So it's been, it's been, you know, it's very fun and I think rewarding four and a half years yes. you know, in, in London, despite the 46 days at the Bart Hospital. And, you know, overall, it's actually... You know, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased, you know, to be able to help, you know, uh, strengthening the relationship between Indonesia and, and the UK and especially Indonesia and, 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 and Scotland. And I will also, you know, would like to thank Bridge Champs, you know, pa Chris and pa Ensley for the, you know, prayers that you sent me, uh, you know, during my, you know, uh, hospitalization at that time and and you know you you're so nice and it really give me give me the boost you know in the spirit you know in order to 
uh, recover, you know, uh, uh, quickly. But it was really difficult time, you know, especially because uh, one week, you know, after I got the surgery, it was a lockdown. And then, you know, uh, Hannah and the kids could not come and see me in the hospital. So I was 23 days at the ICU and uh, another 23 days at the, uh, at the ward. So it's a bit weird, you know, I went to hospital in March and then got conscious in April. <laughs> so already April at that time. Oh, really? Thank you okay. so much. I didn't, I didn't realize this. it was that serious. Wow. Okay, I can't have yeah. been very pleasant not to see your, your family for so long. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it sounds like you're in good spirits now and, and fully on the road to recovery. So that, that's great news. Thank you. One of, the, one of the other things that you mentioned when you took up uh, the post of ambassador was that uh, you commented that uh, Indonesia often tends to focus inwards, but with globalization, you need to transcend that. Uh, and your greatest challenge is how to really put Indonesia on the radar of the British public, because we. Indonesia is not part of the Commonwealth and people don't often know Indonesia beyond Bali. So you said one of your priorities was to reflect this um, and put Indonesia on the map. Um, to what extent do you think that's been, been achieved um, it, over the last four and a half years and how have you gone about that? Uh, still, you know, we need a lot of works, you know, to do, you know, in order to really uh, promote and introduce Indonesia to the wider uh, British, you know, British public, uh, and also, you know, in in certain certain sectors, uh, one of the sectors that I think, you know, we haven't been able to do uh, more, uh, you know, actually, even though we already started with the help of Bridgem, of course, you know, and 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 help by Chris and and by Ansley, you know, with the business, you know, sector. I remember, I think the last visit that I did, you know, before all this COVID, you know, uh, pandemic, is actually to, to to Glasgow, where you know we had that sessions with the uh, renewable energy companies. And then hopefully, you know, uh, once this pandemic, you know, go away, you know, we can, you know, continue that, you know, that work in order to bring an, uh, the stronger linkages, you know, between the renewable energy sector in, you know, Scotland uh, with, with, with Indonesia, which I think, you know, really needs that uh, 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 sector, you know, to develop further. Uh, but, you know, I think with the younger generations are coming to the UK, uh, we do begin to, you know, put Indonesia on the map. For example, we do have a team of researchers, you know, uh, at the University of Nottingham, for example. So they, they have a number of Indonesians, you know, who already uh, become part of the team at the university to develop certain uh, research, you know, on cancer and even on the, on the you know, on, on COVID. We also, of course, work very uh, 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 closely with the cultural activists, what we call it in the UK, you know, through the music. And, and, and arts uh, in, in order to, uh, and, and over the last four and a half years, we managed to organize a lot of uh, performance, you know, if you like, you know, in a number of uh, cities in, in the UK, including, and also in the small cities, you know, it's not uh, only in, in London or Manchester or, or, or Liverpool, but, you know, we go also to smaller cities and we do have meeting in, uh, we, we do visit uh, small uh, uh, cities, you know, where I don't think that they really know Indonesia. I remember one of the cities that we visited and then we met with the business there is the Lincoln. It's very interesting. You know, we begin to develop, uh, you know, cooperation with the vocational trainings with the Lincoln College. You know, so these are the things that I think, you know, we need to do more in, in, in the future. But overall, uh, uh, four and a half years is actually, if we want to, you know, achieve all the target, it's still short. So it's need yes. your continuation. And then we need, you know, I think uh, more activity in the future, which I believe the incoming ambassador, you know, I think will begin also to continue what we have started uh, since 2016. Well, that, that's great. I, mean, I, I, I fully agree with what you say. And I do hope that uh, when I uh, think the situation gets a bit better and, and people can travel more freely, we can do a lot more in the renewable mm -hmm. energy sector. Though I may uh, be calling you later in the year because we, we might need some help and some advocacy regarding a little bit of deregulation. Sure, <laughs> sure. Anytime, terrible. anytime, yeah. honestly. That would be, that would be helpful. Um, and the other, the, the other point you mentioned was uh, you, you, you travel all over the country and you see a lot of Indonesian diaspora, and particularly the students. Mm. And I think Chris and I uh, both agree that the quality of the, the Indonesian students studying in the UK is is exceptional. In fact, 
I mean, the last three people I've employed have been uh, Indonesian graduates of, of UK universities. And I do think that that's a big area of opportunity because that, that's a way to foster better understanding, um, better understanding of, of how the UK and Indonesia can work together. So I, I really do hope that, uh, that, that uh, the UK and Indonesia can, can make more of a, I would say almost like a strategic plan to try and better utilize uh, yeah. Indonesian student population and, and uh, alumni. And hopefully now that the, the, uh, the post-study work visas are, are being allowed, there can be more of that. Uh, Chris, do you want to ask him anything on that subject? Because I know it's particularly... Um, um, you're yeah, no, not, not so much um, ask, but to, to share a couple of developments with you, uh, uh, Pat Rizal. Um, Britcham has formally set up uh, a Britcham Education Centre now. Mm. Um, the purpose of the centre is to encourage more uh, more volume of Indonesians going to the UK. As Ainsley said, the quality is excellent. We now need more volume, we think. Um, and perhaps more of that volume needs to be guided into where there are gaps in human capital uh, capacity uh, in Indonesia and also align it with perhaps some of the priorities that Indonesia has as well, be they uh, tourism, hospitality, uh, engineering related to infrastructure and so on. Um, so we've been working very hard to, to get on board a panel of British universities, not necessarily the typically thought of ones, but uh, you mentioned Lincoln College, they're one that's on board um, on our panel. Um, <clears throat> and we have been um, particularly focused on, on the areas of, of employability. Um, mm -hmm. So those with programs, undergraduate mainly, um, programs where they've got uh, uh, acknowledgement and acceptance of very good programs related to employability. So we'll have our first rollout in the first quarter of next year in terms of actually recruiting students. Um, but more particularly, this is not just a recruitment exercise. We're working with our, our big companies um, to also understand what qualifications they will be looking for from returning Indonesian students. Uh, working with them to uh, get their support for meaningful internships and also for their HR departments to buddy with some of these students during the course of uh, uh, their journey in the UK. And hopefully, hopefully they go back and it becomes the first rung of their career ladder. But most importantly, of course, you know, if, if, um, if a student is wound up on, let's say, getting involved in working with an HSBC or Standard Chartered, those qualifications and that experience will be absolutely transferable to Bank Mandiri and BCA That's and right. uh, OCBC. Yeah. So uh, the value will come back to Indonesia. So that, that was more of an update than anything else. And I know that you'd always be happy to engage with us formally or informally and, and support developments in that regard. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, one, one of the, my concerns in this area uh, a lot of you know we, we uncertainty regarding the visa for those you know who will start the study in uh, September this year, you know because the visa center in Manila is still closed, the home office mm -hmm. is still I think mostly closed. So there are the thousands of Indonesian students now actually get stuck in Jakarta, so they can't actually uh, come. Uh, not only because of the uh, visa center is still closed, but also because many of the universities haven't decided have not decided yet you know, whether they will go online or, you know, on, on campus. So that, you know, I think it's make it difficult also for, you know, the student for, for this year, you know, to come, you know, to, you know, to, to the UK. Uh, yeah. But some university already decided you can't defer. That's also another problem, you know, so yes. when, when the student cannot defer, you know, for uh, 2021, so they are being asked, you know, to be in London by September but it's also problematic because they cannot get a visa. <laughs> so hopefully this you know, will be resolved soon, especially because the discussion is already ongoing you know, between the UKKI uh, and, and, and the LPDP, for example. I agree, but, but Chris, you know, we, need, we, we need more you know, Indonesians you know, to actually take part in you know, many uh, activities you know, at the universities in the, in the UK. And some's already ha you know, happening. Uh, the you know, thing for example, is a very, very active you know, in, in trying to, you know, have these collaborations uh, within Indonesia and, and the university. And also, uh, Pat Rizal, I think uh, likewise, we, 
we need more visible physical presence of British campuses in time in Indonesia. And uh, yes. we, we hope that whatever, whatever role you have going forward, mm -hmm. that uh, people like you will always encourage the new Minister of Education to continue with his plan to be a lot more open yes. to internationalization in many, many different ways. Yeah, yes, I agree, I agree, yeah. If, if you look, I mean, Malaysia's done very well in that regard. Yeah. Particularly mm -hmm. around Iskander and Johor. So it'd be great to see some, something like that here. And I fully agree with you on, uh, on the visa issue. My son, who's in Jakarta at the moment, oh. is <laughs> going to go back to the UK in September to, to study. And all his friends have the same issue. And I've been yeah. asking what's going on, trying to get information from the universities. They need to make up their minds pretty quickly. That's it's, right. It's, it's not very helpful. Um, keeping people in limbo and not allowing people to defer if they can't get a visa is not fair either. So yeah, <laughs> I think the policy needs to be much clearer and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll do that very shortly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your term as ambassador, uh, in terms of UK uh, politics, it was quite a lot of turbulence. You know, yes. I, I remember uh, end of 2014, Boris Johnson came out here uh, 2015, I think David Cameron came out. There was a lot of UK ministers coming out. And just as you got to uh, the UK in February of 2016, David Cameron announced there was going to be a Brexit referendum. And the, and the world changed a little bit. But it, it must have been very difficult, I would have thought, to engage with government. And if I look at the the Cameron government, and particularly the Theresa May government, it was like a rotating door of, of uh, ministers on a regular basis. So how, how did you cope with that situation? Uh, well, you know, uh, on the one hand, you know, we are uh, lucky because we get to know a lot of ministers, you know, in one position. <laughs> and then, you know, we, we can expand, you know, the friendships. Uh, but, you know, uh, I begin to discover as well, I think it's also important to work with cities yeah, uh, you know, instead of you know, only with the central government. So you know, we developed relationship with Manchester, with Glasgow, with Liverpool. Uh, so that's uh, the you know, I think uh, the uh, approach that you know uh, we did, especially you know when uh, the UK begin to get preoccupied with the Brexit you know uh, uh, process, yes. uh, and uh, the working directly you know with the cities, uh, you know I think you know really. Uh, give us the more concrete, you know, areas of cooperation, and actually a lot of doable things that we can that we can do. So that mm -hmm. is one approach that you know uh, uh, we took in order to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, cope with the political challenges that you know in Westminster, uh, and and this you know I think you know will continue also. You know I think uh, there are a number of cities that you know already in the pipeline, but because of the COVID again, you know we have to postpone it. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I find it. There's a parallel here in Indonesia. I, I, I tend to find if we deal with regional governments or municipal governments, we quickly mm -hmm. move more to practical uh, opportunities. Yeah. Uh, and I th so I, th I think your your strategy of engaging with the with the cities and and the regions is probably a very wise one. Um, on on the subject of Brexit or linked to it, last year there was a CSIS uh, round table. Uh, about the UK engaging with ASEAN, and Chris, mm -hmm. and, Chris and I were there. I think uh, Yusuf Wanandi and yourself were were hosting it. And at the time, you said that the United Kingdom needs to provide more information about its strategies and objectives in engaging ASEAN. Um, what did you mean? By, where do you see that the UK uh, wasn't being clear enough on on its strategies? And do you think it really understands? How to, uh, how, to, how to engage with ASEAN? The the goal is you know is is clearer now you know because yeah. the UK government already submit you know the applications to be the uh, dialogue yes. partner of, of ASEAN. Uh, now what I think you know we need to really uh, uh, discuss and also you know to have more information actually and how we get there you know because we know for example with regard to the dialogue partner status um, in ASEAN is still you know in a moratorium. And you know, there are you know a number of other countries you know who's also already applied say five to you know uh, seven years ago. Uh, this you know I think the challenge that ASEAN need to need to overcome and also need to discuss you know with 
you know, we do, you know, with the UK. Uh, and then what are the stages, you know, that ASEAN and the UK need, you know, to, to really uh, take, you know, before, you know, we uh, go into this uh, dialogue partners, you know, status. Uh, for example, you know, there are a number of types of uh, corporations uh, or type of relationships like uh, development partner, sectoral partner, you know, and, and so on. And how this, you know, can be the bridge uh, before uh, I think all ASEAN countries are comfortable to uh, leave the moratorium so that, you know, we can uh, have, you know, the UK as the uh, dialogue partner. Uh, that's, you know, I think uh, still, you know, re uh, requires, you know, I think a clearer uh, strategy, both on the part of ASEAN and also on the part of the UK. So, but I think the discussion, especially with the appointment of the uh, UK ambassador to ASEAN, uh, is I think you know the channel of communication now is you know is is very uh, easy because you know there is somebody who will continue to uh, follow that you know uh, uh, process. So John Lam in in Jakarta, you know I think uh, will be uh, very busy you know to do the lobbying with the uh, you know ten ASEAN members you know on 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 this issue. And then of course you know as a Indonesia's ambassador to the UK, you know I really hope that you know we 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 will not you know it will not take years and years you know before this issue actually you know resolve you know because uh, we know that you know the consensus always takes time but you know sometimes you know we need to really move faster well, on that point of moving faster right, chris and i are in business um and i i i looked how long it took for uh, indonesia to agree a, a trade agreement with australia and how long it's still taking with europe um, and the backlog the the UK has in trying to, to sort out trade agreements around the world. What's your view on these comprehensive trade agreements, and and or is there um, another alternative that could make could maybe engineer some more quick wins in the interim, so we, come, we don't have to wait forever to get uh, trade agreements done? Um, which which comprehensive? You mean the CTTPP or? So the 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 CEPA, for example, has taken with the EU has taken an awful long time oh. to put together, and then the the trade agreement with Australia took a very long time to put together, and right. <laughs> UK government is now obviously trying to to do trade deals around the world, but they'll take a long time to put together. I'm just wondering, it, it, it's an alternative approach that might be more practical. That could focus on just a few sectors that that would benefit uh, both both countries. Yeah, that's I think uh, one way of of, of doing it. Uh, but you know, with regard to the Indonesia UK uh, trade uh, agreement, you know, I think that there there was the agreement between the two sides uh, before that. You know, we we will continue to uh, you know uh, finish the uh, negotiation with the EU and then mm -hmm. use that as the you know the the, the framework. Know, for Indonesia, uh, uh, UK, uh, yes. but again, you know, because you know that you know Indonesia EU has been put, you know, I think, on hold, and then all other, you know, the discussion is also, uh, you know, has to face constraint of the uh, of of the uh, pandemic. Uh, it will take, you know, I think, uh, longer. Uh, not to mention also, of course, you know, in countries like Indonesia, it's a bit difficult to forge consensus, you know, regarding the importance of free trade. Uh, mm -hmm. Because there are these, you know, pools that, you know, uh, in 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 the domestic politics that the negotiator or even those the policymakers need to reconsider. Uh, but you know, again, uh, hopefully, uh, once you know all this uh, pandemic, you know, goes away, so we hope that we can continue to, you know, uh, focus on 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 on, on those you know, negotiation again. Chris, anything you'd like to add? Um. Uh, not not on uh, not on that one really. Um, perhaps more about the political landscape, if I may, Pat Rizal, in Indonesia. Um, and uh, this is a, a question that was sort of born out of a conversation. I had a first get together with members of my office um, earlier today, uh, and that's the first time uh, four of us have been together for for months. And um, it, it's just, I mean, obviously it was a big deal. Uh, for the predominantly younger generation to elect President Jokowi in twice. Um, and, um, you know, it was sort of pushing aside the old guard. I mean, do you, do you think that they will reflect on this trust as being well-placed and perhaps what your thoughts on what they may hang their hat on 
in the future. Um, obviously, COVID has queried the pitch on everything, but uh, if, if we can just set that aside. Uh, I think the last election is going to be the last, you know, election where the old guard are still, you know, competing. So, you know, by 2024, you know, we uh, uh, hope that, you know, we will move to a new generation. And I think a number of candidates already, you know, slowly emerging. You know, we see the, you know, the, the new players. And then I think it's good as well because the next leaders of Indonesia will have experience, you know, of governance either you know in the uh, municipalities or in, in the in the province you know probably the leaderships you know uh, will, will come from 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 those you know uh, uh, areas so that's i think you know something good so it's not you know, like somebody you know has no experience and suddenly you know uh, because of popularity you know become 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 the the, the president uh, so that's you know hopefully will will take place in 2024 uh, and and i think by 2024 also the generations of new voters, you know, might have different ideas about, you know, what sort of leadership that Indonesia uh, needs. Because I think there would be around like 49 millions of the new voters by that time, who are now still in the probably the mid schools. <laughs> uh, they 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 still like you know 14 years old, uh, or 15 years old will, will be the first voters in 2024. So so we are going to to see the uh, real transition, you know, by 2024. I think they'll be very encouraged by that response, actually. Thank you. Yeah. You, you, mentioned that, um, you mentioned that you've been around the UK and you were particularly keen to make sure not just the big cities, but uh, other towns uh, as well. Um, one, one question my team were very, very keen to ask you is, um, uh, w which cities have you, or towns, have you particularly enjoyed visiting? I mean, if you were, if you were gonna do a one, two, three, which could relate to cultural, personal memories of a rock concert or something like that even. Um, what, what would be your one, two, three, Pat Rizal? Be very careful with this answer. <laughs> right, I know, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is actually, you know, it's unique on its own. Uh, but, you know, because I do have special interest in the history, especially history of the medieval uh, history of, of, the, uh, of England. Uh, I think, you know, those cities that has these old castles, you know, I think uh, uh, really, you know, uh, uh, stick in my, in my memory. For mm. example, you know, we really enjoy, you know, Pembroke. So we went there, you know, and then, you know, uh, look around the uh, castles in Pembroke. And in Scotland is, of course, you know, uh, there are a number of castles that we visited as well, uh, like Conwy castles. Uh, so that's, you know, also an interesting, you know, small city around, around the area. Uh, we were there, you know, I think with Bonnie at that time as well. Uh, in, in the middle of the night, I think, you know, we went there. Uh, and then, of course, uh, a city like Lincoln is also, you know, very, very interesting. It's a very old uh, city with, you know, a lot of, lot of history. So, you know, we, we enjoy, you know, actually uh, working with uh, the councils, you know, in, in, in those, you know, small, you know, small, small cities. But big you know, cities, I think, normal, you know, the, the, you know okay. to visit. Yeah. So, you, you know, uh, Pat Rizal, we did our best to keep your uh, interest and theme in medieval and castles. The, the last roadshow we were on, we, we took your team to Lumley Castle in Durham. Um, right, and, right. And apparently they didn't sleep all night because of the stories <laughs> we, we told them over dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Given you've been all around the UK, I mean, I, I'm from Glasgow, a little bit of a Glasgow accent. Chris is from Liverpool. Accents are different all over the UK. Which part of the UK have you found it the most difficult to understand? Scotland. It's <laughs> 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 <That's> very difficult. <laughs> yeah. But I, sometimes I, you know, it depends, you know, who you talk to. Like in Belfast, it's also sometimes quite difficult, yes. you, know, to, you know, to understand. Yeah. yeah. You, of course, you, you, your portfolio covers Ireland as well. So you travel yes. around Ireland, yes. yes. Mm. Yeah, I think you're very fortunate being able to get yeah. to all, all these places. Uh, yeah, but still there are a number of places that, you know, we didn't have a chance, you know, to visit because, you know, we want to save it last before we go home and then, you know, COVID yeah. happened. <clears throat> so we didn't, but luckily, you know, uh, we, we've been to a lot of places in Scotland as well. You know, uh, like uh, December last year, you know, uh, we went to, of, of course, Loch Ness is a must. Yeah. You know, in Aberdeen, you know, and uh, Inverness, <laughs> so been to all those, you know, uh, cities as well. 
I, I remember before you left to go to uh, to the UK, we held a function at the Mercantile Club, which you spoke at. I think Chris will probably remember. remember. Yep. Yes. And at that, that point in the time, I asked you, uh, and I wasn't really involved in Britcham, but I asked you where you'd like, which place in the UK was your favourite. And you, you made the point to me then that when you were a student, you hadn't been to Edinburgh, but you'd like to go to Edinburgh. Yes. So the first time I ever met you was in Edinburgh. We brought yes. you up to Edinburgh. So I was, I was true to my word. I said, I'll get you to Edinburgh. So I'm very happy that, uh, that you made it. Ainsley is the man that makes dreams yeah, come true. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I went to Edinburgh quite early, you know, in my term as ambassador. Yes. Uh, I think, you know, in my, 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 my first team is still in London at the time. So we went there around like after Pajoko, we left, you know, uh, yeah. London. So that's, uh, I think the opportunity is went there and then, uh, well, Glasgow a couple of times. It's also, uh, I think, uh, the, last, the last one that we visited the, the college. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we plan to do a lot of things again. You know, it's all is being put on hold. So hopefully, mm -hmm. Padesra will continue all those, you know, pending, you know, yeah. activities that we already planned. Have you it, met Padesra? Met, who, who, sorry? The incoming ambassador. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. And probably we have to wait until... Until yeah. the, 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 the agreement, you know, by the UK government, you know, is issued. Yeah. Yes, mm. well, we should do it at some point in time. If, if you were to look back over your last four and a half years, other than an Iron Maiden concert, are there any particular highlights that you're, you're most proud of? Any achievements that uh, when you look back, you think, oh, that was great? Well, I think uh, I educated myself about Indonesia more. So that's, you know, one thing that I never thought would, would happen, especially in terms of the, you know, cultural diversity of Indonesia. For example, when I left Indonesia, I had no idea that there are two types of gamelan. Then I learned about these two type gamelan, you know, when I was in, you know, uh, when, when I'm, in, I'm in London. Uh, and because at that time, you know, I realized that we didn't have gamelan at the embassy. And then I asked the Minister of Education, you know, to send. Uh, so he sent, you know, uh, the gamelan. Uh, first arrived only one set. I thought that's it. Uh, it's already a lot. And then the second set arrived and then I got confused, you know, why two set? And then he told me that gamelan has two types, you know, of, you know, of, of, of gamelan. And then it's really impressed me that uh, in the past, I think, 20 years, you know, such government really uh, uh, had this uh, wonderful program, the Dharma Siswa, you know, where, you know, a lot of uh, uh, British artists actually and students, you know, get the, the, the scholarships, you know, to learn uh, about the uh, music, traditional music and dance in Indonesia. So we organized the first, you know, reunions, uh, reunions of the alumni of their program. So we managed to identify 184 of them, you know, you know, from all over the UK. And then, you know, uh, the, 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 the big one, you know, it's actually one in Glasgow, that's the there is a group in Glasgow, uh, Simon, you know, is, is in Glasgow, and oh, then you know, in Manchester, right, and and, yes. and uh, Oxford, and also in in London. So we had you know, four days of gathering at the embassy at the time. Some will play wayang, some will play you know gamelan, some will play the Sundanese music. That is you know I think the most, uh, I, I, you know the, the 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 activity that really I'm I'm really proud of, which culminated at the end. Uh, their collaborations with the Indonesian, you know, artists for the 70th anniversary of, you know, uh, Indonesia-UK diplomatic relations. So that was wonderful, you know, in the Kadogan, Kadogan Hall. So that is, you know, I think something that I really uh, 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 thankful, you know, because I can educate myself, you know, on, on the diversity of, of Indonesia. The second one that, you know, I really, you know, enjoy is, of course, you know, this learning, you know, the UK history through uh, castles, like I mentioned, you know, you know, earlier. So that is the best way, you know, if we want to understand the origin of the Tudor dynasty, start from Pembroke. You know, want to understand the uh, Plantagenets, you know, start from the Windsor, for example, you know, by the Edward II, you know, and, and so on. And to understand like uh, the history of Scotland, you know, we can start with also castles, you know, somewhere, you know, in, in near the Glasgow or Edinburgh. Yeah. So, so you've mentioned, uh, Pat Rizal, you, you've mentioned culture in terms of the bands and in terms of the castles and so on. Um, well, 
what about in terms of um, a message for people like uh, Pat Bonney and the 10 million plus Liverpool supporters that are Indonesian in Indonesia? Oh. How, de how delighted are you uh, as to what's happened over the last couple of weeks? Well, I'm actually, I'm so sorry because I have to refill which, you know, uh, football club that I support. I'm more like, you know, Spurs, you know, as uh, fans because the stadium is only like like 15 minutes from the residence, you know, and managed to watch, you know, uh, a number of um, a number of games. But, you know, I think uh, it's wonderful, you know, for millions of Indonesians, you know, when uh, Liverpool finally, after 30 years of wait, you know, became the uh, champions, you know, uh, the Premier, Premier League. Uh, and especially Pam Wazab, you know, he kept talking about it, you know. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I but, think you know, he did a, a phenomenal job converting millions of Indonesians to support Liverpool. <laughs> right, right. Very yeah. responsible for that. I'm surprised yeah. he hasn't brainwashed you into supporting them. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, I was going to add, the, um, when, when Pat Mosham left, uh, we, had, we had a little party for him and he said, you know, anyone passing his house in, in Wembley, please come out, please uh, let me know and come for dinner. Have you ever been for dinner at Mosum's and is he a good cook? Yes, he's, you know, yes. he's a very good cook. Ibu Rachel is also a very good cook, you know. Right. <laughs> been to Pak Mosum's, you know, uh, house for uh, lunch, you know, as well. So, yes. you know, I think, you know, he really meant it when he said that, you know, please, you know, drop by anytime. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, any, and any one of you, you know, passing the uh, Aram Sutra in Serpong, you know, please, you know, uh, drop by also, you know, at my, my house. I live in, in Aram Sutra. In, in, in Serpong, but it's, I know it's quite you know far suburb you know, from from Jakarta. Please also contact me anytime. We are all going to be in Jakarta anyway, you know. Sure, we we'll de we'll yeah. definitely uh, yeah. you know, li like to keep in contact. I mean, uh, do you have um, some future plans? Things you would like to do when you come back? Uh, for a while, you know, I will go back to the best job you know uh, I, I can hope for, which is at the CSIS, which yes. only involves reading writing and speaking yes. and then get paid for it that's a great job i think <laughs> <laughs> excellent yeah the i mean I, I read quite a lot of the papers that the csis puts out and actually one area i'm very interested in at the moment is uh, south china sea right uh, I, I, I was there was another article today about the tensions or the potential flashpoints in the, Ch the south china sea between uh China and and the US and we're both countries sort of flexing their muscles. And Indonesia should be should be in quite a it's quite a unique position. I would have thought to to maybe to try and calm things down or influence uh, what happens. Do you see Indonesia being more assertive or taking more of a a, a role in in issues like that? Uh, I think you know, for the last you know few months you know I think we we begin to see that. Indonesia, you know, is, is really uh, 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 making a point that, you know, we all need to stick uh, by the, uh, the the law of the sea. Uh, yes. That, you know, I think is the only rules of the game that all the countries, you know, have agreed, you know, upon. Uh, uh, for example, that, you know, I think the Indonesian's mission in the UN already made, you know, very clear that, you know, we support, you know, the result of the PCA, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the court of arbitrations, you know, we, in, in the case of, of a Philippine, and 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 the the unclos, you know, the uh, law of the sea is really, really, you know, the uh, reference that you know we all need to subscribe to. So without, you know, I think uh, uh, using the uh, law of the sea, it would be difficult, you know, to resolve, you know, the issue in, in South China Sea. Well, I think that's a, that's probably a very sensible way to approach it. Stick to the rules. Yes. If everyone stuck to the rules, then it, there mm -hmm. won't be so much tension. But uh, it's quite. It's, it's becoming a uh, situation that's of increasing concern, I think, to, uh, to a lot of people. Um, next year in Glasgow is the World Climate Change Conference. In November next year, it was supposed to be this year. Uh, in, is Indonesia going to, to play a, um, a significant role in that? Are there any plans uh, for Indonesia? Uh, the initial discussion at the time, I remember, uh, you know, because, you know, we started to discuss it with uh, uh, Jakarta, you know, uh, when uh, the plan uh, 
uh, was uh, initiated by, by by the UK government, you know, especially after uh, Minister Alok Sharma was you know appointed as the key person you know in in in, in you know in the COP uh, in in Glasgow. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know since then you know we haven't discussed anything yet right. you know because you know I think the focus now more you know on on how to deal with this pandemic and then how to make sure that the economy will you know bounce back you know very quickly once the uh, and the pandemic, you know, goes, you know, goes away. But I do think that the commitment, you know, to, uh, 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 you know, to, to have uh, this green economy, you know, is still there. Uh, and, and that's why, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we really want to see uh, what we have discussed in Glasgow uh, with regard to the, uh, you know, the uh, renewable energy with these companies, you know, can become a reality, you know, soon because it can serve both purposes. One, you know, on the green economy and the revival of economy in Indonesia. Second, it's also, uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, in line with what we have promised, you know, uh, uh, with regard to the climate change. Yeah, I, Kevin, who you met, and myself, we, we set ourselves a personal target to get one of these projects underway by the time mm -hmm. the UN Climate Change Conference uh, commences. Because I think it would be great for Indonesia and the UK to showcase something in that area, in, in that sector, that's uh, yeah. going, it's working. So it's it's uh, rest assured there'll be every uh, bit of effort on my part to try and make 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 sure something happens in that area. Uh, I'm conscious of the time. We've taken up almost 45 minutes of your time, uh, Chris. Yeah, anything you'd like to add? I, I think just, just just another little bit of relevant sharing with yeah. with what Ainsley has said in mind. Uh, we mentioned education earlier and you alluded to uh, provinces and governors being able to move quickly and in smart city development. Um, we, we are re-establishing this month um, cross-sectoral groups for climate change, for human capital and education, and for smart cities. So uh, we'll keep you up to speed with the progress that they make because uh, I think they overlap with many of your own personal interests and goals for Republic of Indonesia and the relationship with the UK as well. Thank you. Thank you, Pagris. Yeah, and uh, hopefully when COVID-19 starts to go away and you're, you're feeling a lot better, um, we will see you in Jakarta. I mean, you'll yes, see please. the IS yeah. role. Um, yeah, be, sure. It'd be, it'd be great to catch up. Um, sure. Yeah. I, I, I would very much look forward to that. And, yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, rest, rest assured, uh, we're equally committed to working with your successor. Um, yes, and I, would, I would like to point out, it's been, it's been a great pleasure to work with your team. You know, we, we communicate very regularly um, and I know they put in a lot of time and effort as well to try and support us. So both Chris and myself and all our members are, are, are very uh, appreciative of, of the effort made by your team to try and, and help us whatever possible. Anything I've ever asked for, they've been able to do thank yeah. you thank you also for you know i think the the support and also the insight you know and the the, the help you know from a bridge up you know to make you know in, in making you know our job you know in london you know i think easier so especially with the connection with the context uh, uh over the last four and a half years you know thank you so much for all the support